My name is uh, Don McCullum. I'm a photographer, of course. Tate Gallery have very kindly invited me to show some of my work here, which is a great honor for me. It's slightly out of the ordinary because I'm sadly known as a war photographer, which I really hate being spoken of in that light. But uh, so what's happened here today, we've chosen, or the, the curator here, Simon Baker, has chosen a set of my pictures that doesn't show any signs of war, despite the fact there is a section of the building of the Berlin Wall in 1961, which in many people's eyes thought was the outbreak of Third World War, or could have been. Well, I was a very young photographer with, with a, I wasn't even really a photographer. I had very little experience. I mean, I had no experience of international affairs and a story of such a huge caliber. I went straight to Friedrichstrasse, where the tension between the Americans and the Russians and the East Germans were really, the build-up was enormous. And there were tanks and armored vehicles from both sides facing each other. It, it was very serious. I had a very, very close association with London, having been born in London and having been born on the wrong side of the tracks, as they say. And I started seeing people sleeping in shop doorways. And when I went to third world countries, people would refuse to believe there were poor people in England. But there were many, many untold truths about this country. We had poverty, we had unemployment, we had you know, we had a class system that wasn't convenient and all kinds of things that people who lived outside of England wouldn't have understood. So when I started walking the streets of London and seeing people sleeping in shop doorways, even I was shocked. What I tried to do is I tried to draw those people into my, my vision. I, I, I tried to make myself unimportant in the presence of such people. And I tried to let their eyes meet my eyes, which I think in many cases I've managed to succeed. I want them to see I am no harm, no threat to them. I want them to see that I'm looking at them through a pair of eyes that have enormous compassion and understanding. There is a section on the industrial uh, north of England. These pictures show the cost of, you know, by being a great powerful industrial nation, but at the same time, someone had to suffer and that was the English countryside. Um, so when you look at some of these industrial landscapes, they're rather harsh and brutal because the industrial demands on landscape was wicked. I mean, you know, it turned beautiful countryside into, you know, mud pits and, and slurry pits and places like that. Well, eventually I moved out of London because I, I couldn't stand being around too many people. I needed to isolate my myself from people. I was always, you know, I went went to the wars and saw the suffering and then I came back and I felt I couldn't share that suffering just with my photography. The landscape became a kind of process of healing so that I could forget about wars and revolutions and dying children because I was beginning to take those, those memories to bed with me at night and having terrible dreams and terrible nightmares and feeling guilty and waking up in a sweat and um, that wasn't doing me any good. So to stand in the English countryside with my camera, I'm harming nobody.